Good morning. I am Dr. Magdi Hassan. Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology in the Faculty of Medicine in Anshams University. I have the pleasure to be with you in this lecture about an important topic, under the title of Antenatal Care. By the end of the lecture, every one of you is expected to be able to define antenatal care and its objectives, diagnose the occurrence of pregnancy, plan a protocol for antenatal care, determining the number of visits. Mention the value of antenatal care visits both the first and return visits. List routine the investigations recommended for the pregnant women. List the warning symptoms of pregnancy. Take an appropriate history from a pregnant woman during an antenatal visit. Diagnose some obstetric and general conditions from the results of routine investigations. The word, anti, means before and natal means delivery. So, Antenatal means before delivery i.e. pregnancy. Antenatal care means care given to the mother and her future baby during pregnancy, aiming at having an uneventful pregnancy, safe delivery, and motherhood. It is an example of the preventive health care program i.e. preventing occurrence of problems or complications rather than treating an already present complication. To estimate the importance of having an effective antenatal care program let's revise some figures issued by the World Health Organization. In 2015 around 830 women died daily from problems related to pregnancy and childbirth. Out of this number only 5 lived in high income countries. The rest of the women which is the majority lived in low income countries. This means that complications related to pregnancy and labor represent a real significant health problem especially in developing countries. An ideal ANC program is expected to achieve the following objectives. Early, accurate risk assessment of the pregnant woman. Identification of the patient at risk for complications. Anticipation and prevention of health problems. Early detected and intervention to prevent or minimize morbidity. Good preparation of the pregnant lady for safe birth and child rearing. Patient education and communication. Care. Where is an ANC conducted? The ideal place for having the ANC is a specialized maternity hospital or the maternity department of a general hospital. Equipments and facilities should be available whether those needed for maternal or fetal assessments e.g. ultrasound machine and sonicade for fetal heart sound. Ideally there are two ANC clinics. One for the low-risk patients and another for the high-risk cases. Since ANC starts once pregnancy is diagnosed, this takes us to the ways by which pregnancy can be diagnosed. Diagnosis is as usual based on symptoms, signs, and maybe investigations. Symptoms suggestive of pregnancy include amenorrhea which is the cessation of menstruation in a patient with previously regular periods. Breast pain and heaviness are also of the early suggestive symptoms. Changes in appetite which takes the form of nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite and dyspepsia. These are sometimes called, emesis gravidarum. Fatigue, usually the patient feels tired with effort intolerance. Urinary frequency, this is due to pressure by the gravid uterus on the urinary bladder. But keep in mind that all these symptoms are only suggestive of pregnancy and not conclusive because the same symptoms can occur in absence of pregnancy. And this point will be clarified in more details in the face-to-face -face session. Suggestive signs on examination include Breast changes, pregnancy makes breast tissues congested so the breasts feel enlarged, tender. The congested breast compresses the subcutaneous veins leading to the appearance of dilated skin veins. The pigmenting hormones of pregnancy namely melanocyte stimulating hormone causes hyperpigmentation especially of the areola and nipple. Genital tract organs acquire hypervascularity. This makes the uterus, cervix and vagina soft together with violet color of the vulva. Again signs are not conclusive, only suggestive. To conform the diagnosis of pregnancy you have to proceed for investigations because neither symptoms nor signs are conclusive. Two main procedure can help confirmation. First is pregnancy test, second is ultrasound examination. Pregnancy test is based on detection of the newly secreted hormone human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG. 
it is a hormone secreted by cells of the embryo, trophoblasts. This hormone can be detected in serum either by ELISA or radioimmunoassay. The test is positive when the hormone level is as low as 5 mu slash mlie almost 4 weeks from LMP. While it can be positively detected in urine when its level is 50 mu slash mlie almost 5 weeks. Ultrasound examination is another tool for sure diagnosis of pregnancy. Transpelvic ultrasound can see pregnancy in the following order. Pregnancy sac 5 weeks. Gestational ring is at 6 weeks. Embryonic echo 7 weeks. Fetal heart detected at 8 weeks. Transvaginal ultrasound can see each finding one week earlier than the transpelvic. Another useful ultrasound procedure is Doppler ultrasound which can hear the fetal heartbeat starting from 12 weeks. So to sum up, we simply have three approaches for ultrasound examinations during pregnancy. Transpelvic or transabdominal where the ultrasound probe is applied to the anterior wall. Transvaginal where a probe is introduced through the vagina. The Doppler ultrasound for fetal heart auscultation. The ideal antenatal care program is composed of two components. First is the initial visit, the booking visit. Second is the return or subsequent visits. The initial visit, booking visit, is supposed to be as early as pregnancy is confirmed. The physician during this visit has to do the patient the following in sequence. History taking in details. Physical examination, general and abdominal. Investigations, the routine investigations recommended in early pregnancy and any additional investigations needed according to the case. Medications, these include the routine external supplementations and any other required medication. Health education, instructions and advice These are a group of advices and instructions to guide the patient about how to modify her lifestyle to cope with pregnancy and how to prepare herself for safe delivery and motherhood. The first item of history taking is the personal history. It aims at getting the personal data of the patient. Patient age, as pregnancy at the extremes of age, below 16 and above 40, is risky. Patient occupation is also important especially for occupational hazards like exposure to radiation. The level of education. The patient residence especially if she lives in areas endemic in certain diseases like malaria in Central and Western Africa. We should also inquire about any special habits of health significance concerning pregnancy, like, alcoholism or smoking whether active or passive. From the menstrual history we are concerned mainly with the first day of her last menstrual period LMP which should be decided precisely, form which we can calculate gestational age in weeks and the expected date of her delivery. These are calculated according to Nagel's rule. For Nagel's rule to be applicable and accurate the LMP should be a reliable one. So what are the criteria of reliability? Or what are conditions to consider the LMP reliable? Firstly it should be a sure date and the patient is not hesitant. Her periods were regular for the last three cycles. And this last period was not preceded by any hormonal therapy. This is Nagel's rule and how to apply it for calculation of the duration of pregnancy, gestational age, and the expected date of delivery. This will be discussed in the face-to-face -face session. Hashtag let's have this example. A pregnant lady has her LMP on 10th of May, 2017. Calculate, ed and gestational age on 14th of November, 2017. Think properly of the answer until we meet in the face-to-face -face session. Also you should get data from the family history about the degree of consanguinity between the patient and her husband. The nearer the consanguinity like being cousins, the greater is the risk for getting babies with congenital anomalies. History of inherited diseases in the families of the patient or her husband which may be transmitted to the offsprings like hemolytic anemias. The past history medical diseases and surgical operations is of great importance. History of chronic medical disease, like diabetes and hypertension as these diseases may affect and be affected by the course of pregnancy. Previous surgical operations whether obstetric operations like previous caesarean section, 
also gynecological operations done to non-pregnant genital organs like myomectomy as this affects the way of delivery. History of blood transfusion is important especially in RH negative patients. The most important part of history is the obstetric history, which is simply the history of the previous pregnancies and deliveries. Obstetric history includes two main points. 1. Parity and gravidity. Parity, means the number of previous deliveries and abortions and expressed as P A and B. Where A is the number of deliveries while B is the number of abortions. What is the difference between abortion and delivery? The answer will be in the face-to-face -face session. Gravidity means the order of the current pregnancy. So when we say gravita fifth, this means that this patient is now pregnant for fifth time. You ask about the details of each pregnancy and delivery, how was each pregnancy, any associated complications, at what gestational age was the delivery, was it a vaginal or cesarean and was the outcome a boy or girl. Some of the famous terms. Prima gravita expressed PG means pregnant in her first pregnancy. Nulla gravita, a woman who never got pregnant before. Nulliparous, a woman who never delivered before. Multiparous, a woman who delivered more than once. Until we meet in the part 2, goodbye.